Happy New Year and welcome to the first episode of The Die Society. This is a podcast about the MCDM RPG, where I talk about the development of the game, my playtest experience, and, once the time is right, first and third party content being made for the RPG. Before getting into today's main topics, let me introduce myself and explain why I decided to create this podcast. My name is Caio, and I'm the author of TheDieSociety.com. I'm a programmer by trade, but I've been getting into game design over the last year. And since I'm a huge fan of MCDM's work, once they announced they were making their own game, I quickly joined the Patreon and their Discord server. I've been following development very closely for the past year, from Patreon posts to Twitch streams, and I think it's time to give back to the community. So my goal with this podcast is very simple. Help people who want to play the MCDM RPG get started. And since the game isn't even close to done, I think it'd be fun to talk about the development and the playtest packets while we wait. Cool? Cool. Let's roll for initiative and get started by talking about the current state of the RPG. First of all, If you have no clue what I'm talking about, the MCDM RPG is exactly what it sounds like. MCDM's role-playing game. They are still working on a final name, but in case the MCDM part still doesn't ring a bell, that's the name of Matt Colville's company, which he founded after becoming a hit YouTuber and launching a super successful Kickstarter. Matt and MCDM's lead designer James Intercasso started working on the game in early 2023 after the whole OGL situation. And if you want to know more about this rat's nest of a topic, I'll leave some links in this episode's description. Let's not get sidetracked. Anyway, they wanted to make a tactical, heroic, and cinematic fantasy role-playing game that wasn't burdened by D&D's, well, baggage. They noodled on the game for almost a full year until they launched a crowdfunding campaign on Backerkit in early December. Needless to say, it was a massive success. It made record-breaking $2 million on the first day and once the campaign was done, had reached over $4.6 million in more than 30,000 backers. Rules are obviously still in development. But we know some things are likely to be in the final product, such as no rolling to hit, 10 levels of progression, characters being defined by their classes, ancestries, pasts, and etc. If you're curious, there are already some videos published on MCDM's YouTube channel explaining some of the RPG's main features. I'll end up talking about most of them over the course of this year, but you can check them out in the links in the description in case you don't want to wait. And speaking of waiting, in case you can't wait to play the game yourself, Patreon supporters, like me, have already gotten a playtest packet, and backers are supposed to get a more polished version in Q2 of this year. I have already read through the whole packet and have a playtest session scheduled with my group this weekend. Once our session is done, I'll make a whole episode talking just about my impressions of how the game currently plays, but in the meantime, I think it can already give you a taste of one of my favorite parts, its approach to class design. Let's get to it. So classes. Much like other D20 fantasy games, classes give your hero their most important characteristics, like stats and attacks. In the MCDM RPG, they all have approximately the same skeleton, but each class has some unique way of bending the rules. So, for instance, all of them have a custom heroic resource, which can be spent in order to activate their most powerful abilities, called heroic abilities. The talent's heroic resource, however, hinders them, which means that they don't want to accumulate it. They want to do the opposite. All classes also have abilities that don't cost anything, called signature abilities, so you can always have something interesting to do while you charge your heroic resource. But the tactician's signature abilities have the added benefit of giving them more heroic resources to spend. Anyway, 
I'll talk about the class features of the five pregens present in the playtest packet, but let me make it clear that I won't explain everything. Conditions and ancestries, for instance, are beyond the scope of this episode. I'll also be making comparisons with D&D classes so that they're easier to understand, but I assure you that MCDM's classes aren't ripoffs. They have plenty of new and exciting mechanics that have nothing to do with D&D. So let's begin with the tactician. The tactician isn't just a fighter. It's closer to 4E's warlord class. They are a master of tactics that can even grant extra attacks, damage, and movement to their allies. Tacticians are good at might and reason, which are like strength and intelligence. Their heroic resource is focus, and they gain one focus per turn, and some extra with their signature stratagems, which is the special name for their abilities. Their first ability is called Taunt. They can do it once per turn for free, and it focuses enemy fire on you instead of your allies. It's like goading. Another ability they have, which is triggered like a reaction, it's called parry, which halves damage. Given that this game doesn't have a two-hit roll, you're only rolling for damage, this is super, super important. They have two signature abilities, positioning strike, which does damage and lets an ally move for free, and sees the opening, which skips your attack in order to let an ally attack. Their heroic abilities are inspiring attack, which costs three focus, and you do damage, plus you let an ally spend a recovery, meaning gain health. And you also have hammer and anvil, costing 5 focus. This one deals damage and lets an ally do an attack for free. Next, we have the Talent, which is a sorcerer, wizard, psionic character. It works pretty similar to the 5v talent that MCDM released last year, meaning you can cast as many spells called powers as you want, but you accumulate strain if you do it too much which hinders some of your other abilities. Never your casting ability, but your checks, your saves, how fast you can move, that kind of stuff. Talents have good endurance and reason, which are constitution and intelligence, which makes them a pretty standard glass cannon. Their heroic resource is strain, which is a negative resource, so there's this inherent push your luck mechanic. You can always cast four, but this can give you strain. What are you gonna do? Anyway, one of their first abilities is called Telekinetic Shield, which reduces damage from incoming attacks. Your signature abilities, which are the ones that don't give you strain, are Concussive Slam, which does damage and allows you to slide the target, Energy Siphon, which does damage and reduces the next damage you take, and Telekinesis, which doesn't do damage, but lets you toss a target up, down, left and right, wherever you want. Your heroic abilities are Dagger of the Mind, which does a little bit of damage, but can daze the target until the end of their next turn. Slow Zone, which doesn't do damage, but slows a bunch of people in an area and Flay, which does a bunch of damage and can push all the targets. Anyway, as I've said, people who've played the 5th edition talent might recognize some of these names. Now on to the Conduit, which works like a cleric, but depending on your god, you either focus on dealing damage, or healing, or some of column A, some of column B. Here, the inspiration from 4th edition is very clear, because your healing actually activates characters' recoveries, and doesn't actually spend your action to do so. Conduits have high intuition and presence, which are like wisdom and charisma. Your heroic resources, and you have two, are virtue and wrath which power your healing and damage, respectively. One of your abilities is Healing Grace. You get it once per turn for free, and the target can spend one recovery for each virtue you spend while casting. 
your signature abilities, which might give you virtue or wrath, are called Blessed Light, which does damage and gives an ally a boon, which is a d4 on an attack, and Holy Lance, which does damage and you can pull the target towards you. Your heroic abilities are Punishing Smite, which does damage and might knock the target prone, and Terrifying Smite, which does a bunch of damage and can even frighten the target. Both of these cost Wrath. And speaking of Wrath, now we can move on to the Fury, which is like a Barbarian if they could be even more ragey. <laughs> they can deal a lot of damage and even reduce incoming damage. Furies have high might and endurance, high strength and constitution, and their heroic resource is Rage, which grants static benefits if accumulated or can give you extra damage if you spend it. Your Growing Rage trait grants you Immunity 3, meaning you subtract 3 from all damage. Once you hit 3 Rage, you gain a boon on melee attacks. Again, a boon is a d4. Once you hit 6 Rage, and you gain 2 extra squares of speed once you hit 9 Rage. One of your abilities is Strike Back which lets you deal damage to any enemy that attacks you or an adjacent ally. Your signature abilities are Brutal Slam, which does damage and pushes targets, and Devastating Rush, which means you can run right before doing damage, and you add damage according to how many squares you ran before the attack. Your heroic abilities, which cost rage, are Whirlwind Strike, which does damage to every enemy around you, and Weakening Strike, which does a huge sum of damage and can even weaken the target. And last, but not least, we have the Shadow. The Shadow is like a rogue, but with shadow magic. They're glass cannons, but have plenty of ways of avoiding damage. They have high agility and reason, which is dexterity and intelligence, and their heroic resource is Insight, which can be used for extra teleports and damage. Adding boons to your attacks gives you extra insight, incentivizing attacking from a hidden position. One of your abilities is In All This Confusion. It's a triggered action that happens when an enemy attacks you, and you can teleport out of the way and reduce the damage. Your signature abilities are Black Ash Teleport, which you can do instead of moving, and it lets you teleport and hide at the same time. Fade is an ability that lets you do damage and move before or after the attack, and I work better alone, does damage, and if there's no allies close to the target, you gain a boon on the attack. Your heroic abilities are Hesitation is Weakness, which means you can take your turn basically whenever you want, and Assassinate, which lets you spend 5 Insight for a truckload of damage. Anyway, that's basically it for the 5 classes they have in the playtest packet. They also talked a lot about other classes they want to implement, like the Null, which is like a monk, the Censor, which is like a paladin, the Troubadour, which is like a bard, Operators, which are like artificers, and a bunch more. This is all temp remember this, so all of this can change and probably will before the final game comes out, but it's already really exciting and I'm really happy that I get to playtest this packet before the second week of the year, basically. Now, before I leave you guys, let me just shout out some of the places you can learn more about the RPG and MCDM in general. First, there's their YouTube channel, MCDM, and Matt Colville's channel. On Reddit, you can go to r slash Matt Colville. On Patreon, you can go to MCDM. And there's also an MCDM Discord with channels about the RPG and playtesting. On Twitch, you can follow Matthew underscore Colville and James Intracasso. And if you want to know more about the Dice Society, you can follow me basically anywhere. On Twitter, on Mastodon, on Blue Sky. I even have a YouTube channel wherever. I'm going to leave the links in the description. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for hearing me out. And I hope to see you in the next episode of The Dice Society. Thank you so much.